Hey guys, it's me Kirko Kiebe. In today's video, we are going to go over Roo first block and how you can block build and solve the first block efficiently. This is what the first block looks like. It is just a rectangle that you create on the L side of the cube and these are the pieces that constitute it. Some basic terminology. This is the first block. A corner in H pair like this is just called a pair or I also sometimes call it an F12 pair. This is also a pair, a corner in H pair that you can use for your first block. And we also have pairs like this kind where we have a center in H pair like this. This is our first block center and this is the DL edge. The, it is called the DL edge because well this goes in the D and L position. This is called a square and the square can be built either on the front side of the cube or on the back side of the cube like this and you can extend the square into a rectangle thus solving a first block like this. So those were some basic terminology and I will explain the other things as I go along. The first block is a very free open and intuitive step and as a reason I cannot really uh, give you some rules like do this do that and you can efficiently solve your first block. I can only show you the approach that you can take, the concept and give you an understanding of the thought process and the concept that goes behind the approach and give you some examples that will help illustrate the concept and because the first block is also very free and open it might be confusing for beginners as for what to do for being efficient at the first block for efficiency if you were to solve only one first block all the time if I were to solve the green and white first block all the time even with one first block we can solve the first block in seven moves and less so for achieving this efficiency, we have some standard approaches that we use to make the inspection and thought process a bit simpler and to also be efficient. Before I start with the approaches that we use, I want to go over curl neutrality. Curl neutrality with Roo is a bit different than curl neutrality with CFOP. In CFOP curl neutrality, you solve the cross on any side and then you build F12 players around it. But with Roo curl neutrality, uh, you either solve white on bottom or yellow on bottom and then solve any of these side colors as your first block color. This sort of curl neutrality is called X2 Y curl neutrality because you're either solving this color on the bottom or this color on the top, X2, and then you're solving any of the side colors, Y. So X2 Y curl neutrality. And using X2 Y curl neutrality, you are guaranteed a five move first block each and every time. First block, with just solving a single first block, white and green, you can get seven move solutions all the time. But with a bit of curl neutrality, you can be two moves more efficient on average. Why well, I would suggest being curl neutral right from the start and solve any of these side colors with either white on bottom or yellow on bottom. Also for solving the first block you want to be familiar with the pieces that constitute the first block and in what order they are. So I know that when solving the green first block with white on bottom I have the orange sticker in the front but if I were to solve with yellow on bottom then I know that the red sticker will be in the front. You want to be really familiar with the color scheme of the cube and what pieces constitute your first block so that during the inspection you can be on lookout for these pieces. I am talking for quite some time now without really showing you anything. So the rest of the thing I will just explain as I go. There are three main standardized approaches that we take for solving the first block. The first one is called the DL first approach where you find the uh, first block center, insert the DL edge like this and then insert one F12 pair like this and then insert the next F2 pair which will finish your first block for you. So this is the DL first approach. Insert DL, pair 1, pair 2 and done. And this approach is what people who are transitioning from CFOP to Roo initially start using because they are familiar with the concept of edge and two F2 pairs like this. But one thing to note here is that you don't want to solve uh, your first block with CFOP style F12 solving. A uh, good example of this would be this case. So if you get this case in CFOP, we generally just do RU prime R prime for pairing these two up and then for inserting this in here you would rotate and insert like this. But for Roo, instead of doing all of that, you can just do F prime U F prime like this. So it's just three moves as opposed to five moves or six moves that you would do with, with some other style of solving. And also you want to uh, know some standard inserts that we use for first block. So when you get the case like this, it's just a simple F prime insert like this. And if you were to get this case from this angle, you can just do wide R2 and then F like this. From this angle just AUF and then F prime and from this angle just AUF and then wide R to F. This is the other insert. And if this needs to go here, wide R prime F solves it like this. And you can also get the case from here. You can do wide R prime F2 
like this or you can also do a normal R prime and then F2 it doesn't really matter and you can mirror these uh, cases from the front to the back as well so B like this wide R2 B prime like that this is just wide R prime B prime and if you were to get this case R B2 and done these are some basic inserts that we use for solving our first block and now I will show you some examples to illustrate the DL first approach Another thing I forgot to mention previously is that don't think of your first block as a DL edge and two pairs or anything like that. Think of your first block as one whole entity so that when you're planning your first block, you're thinking of all of these pieces simultaneously as if they are one whole uh, part instead of being smaller parts like DL, pair 1, pair 2 or something like that. When planning, we do plan like a DL edge and then pair 1, pair 2, but you don't want to confine yourself to that sort of thinking. You want to really see the big picture, see the first block as one big step. And for ease of solving this one big step, we use some mini steps which helps us achieve this uh, big picture. It's like when you have a big goal, you don't really go from start to finish like point A to point B one single move. You take mini steps A, B, C, D which help us stay closer to the big goal that we have in mind. DLH pair 1 pair 2 is similar in that regard that our end goal is first block but for making the process easier we break down the first block into mini steps. But while we are planning for the first block, we always want to see the first block as a whole instead of smaller parts. This is the first example for the DL first approach and just looking around the cube, you have a number of edges connected with the respective centers. Like I have the orange edge connected with the respective center in here and the green edge connected with the respective center in here. So if you just rotate the cube like this, you already have the DL edge solved, right? So now that you know that you have the DL that's solved, you want to look at the other pieces that constitute the first block. And this is where being familiar with your first block cases come up. Uh, so I know that when I'm solving white and orange on bottom, the green needs to be at the back and the blue needs to be in the front. So the moment I see the green and orange edge, I instantly want to find out the uh, corner for this, which is at the back in here. And these two are relatively easy, just you two, and then you can pair them up at the back like this. And then you can insert your first pair like this. And then your last pair for the first block is this one. And these two are also easy to solve because the moment you insert this, these two are also one move like this. And you can solve your first block like that. One thing you note here is that you should be looking at your other options that you have instead of just solving uh, what you see first. So this is a good first block, right? Uh, it is relatively easy to see what sort of solution you want to go for just by looking at it. But you don't want to just jump in and solve. You want to consider the other possibilities and other options that are lying around the cube. So I'm going to keep the white and orange first block as an option. And I also have this F2 pair in here. And this has the yellow sticker in here. So I can solve the green or orange with the yellow on bottom first block using this uh, F12 pair in here and I see that the DL edge is here so I can just put the DL edge like this and then this is just one move like this and I'm done and I can also use this for orange so for orange this is here and then this can be inserted by doing R F2. You want to consider the other possibilities that you have because you might see something better than what you initially planned to do and another thing to note is the order of pairs. So after solving the DL edge, which pair do you want to solve first and which pair do you want to solve second? Using the example of the orange and yellow on bottom block, we have both of the pairs for the first block in visible view in here and in here. Now you have to decide which pair you want to solve first and which you want to solve second. If I decide that I want to solve this first, this is going to break up my other pair and you don't want to do that, right? Just by looking at this, I know that I want to solve this pair first instead of solving this first. And like I had mentioned earlier, you want to solve this by doing RF2 like this. And that puts the corner in here and the edge is here. There are, two, there are two ways of actually solving this. You keep the edge in here and then you do an R2, pair this up in here, U2 and then insert like this. And previously I had mentioned that when you get the case from this angle, you can do R2 B prime. But in our current case, we already have the corner in here. So I just need the edge to be in this position and I will be done. So I can just do an M2 from this angle and then a U prime and my first block is done just like that. 
So this was one example of the DL first approach. I did mention a lot of things so take your time, take a break and digest the information before you move on to the further information that I'm going to relay. This is our next example and in here we have the DL edge already solved. Whenever you see an edge connected with the center like in here right, it just shows that you have a good opportunity for trying out the DL first approach because the DL edge is already inserted and you don't have to worry about this. You just need to worry about the other pieces that constitute the first block. And the other pieces for this first block is this one in here, right? And these two at the back. And like I mentioned earlier, the order in which you solve these two cases matters. If I were to solve this first like this, right? It solves my pair number one and the deal was already solved. It gives me a bad case for this last pair, which of course is solvable. You can do something like this. But you don't really need to do this if you uh, did proper pair choice when you were starting off. So this is why I mentioned earlier that you should be thinking of the first block as whole instead of thinking in terms of pairs because then you'll be looking at the big picture instead of uh, focusing on these minor details. In here what I'll do is the DL is already solved and I don't want to solve this first because solving this much will set up this case much more better than the other way around. For solving this case, I know that if I just get the edge from this position to this position, I have these two paired in here, right? So I can insert them like this and the moment I insert this, these two also get paired so I can just insert them like this and I'm done. Alternatively, instead of doing this, you can also do a wide R2 from this angle and then you can insert this with an F prime and then you have these two at the back and for solving this, you want to match the orange with the orange so you two match the orange like this and then simple insert at the back. Just choosing to solve this first made my first block so much more easier. Apart from this white and orange first block, there, there aren't any other edges that are connected with the center which I can use as my DL edge. So the next best would be trying to get these one move uh, center and edge pairs like this. When is going for the DL approach good enough? Usually when you already have the edge connected with the center, it is a good enough time to try out the DL first approach. But there is no guarantee just because the edge is connected with the center, the rest of the first block will, will also be efficient. So instead of being gung-ho about using this approach all the time, you want to keep an open mind, look at the other possibilities and try out the other approaches that I will mention a bit later in the video. So for example, if I were to solve this white and blue with the DL first approach, I will do a D prime for matching the DL uh, with the center and then the other pieces that constitute my first block, these two and then this one in here at the bottom. So what I can do here, I can already see that this corner and edge pair up like this with ease and I can insert this at the back like this. And then the other pair is this one and I can set these two up like this and then solve my first block like that. This is not really as good as the orange and white option that I showed you previously. Why I mentioned that just because you can use the DL approach that does not mean you should be using DL approach all the time because it might not give efficient solutions all the time. We will go over one last example and then I'll move on to the next approach that you can use. This is our last example and there are a couple things I see. I see the spare in here first and foremost and I also see that I have this DL edge connected with the center in here so I know that I can try out the DL first approach in here and this F-tool pair is very good because this is just one move solved like this and the DL edge is also already solved so I don't have to waste any moves trying to solve the DL uh, edge in into the correct position. So I can just do an F-prime in here and that solves pair number one and the DL edge was already solved and the other pair was at the back and this you can solve it in two ways. Simply keep the corner in this position and then you do wide R and B move and your first block is done. Or you can do it from this angle, keeping the edge and the corner here, pair and then insert at the back. The first block here is 4 to 5 moves depending on how you solve this case. F prime, U prime or B prime like this or F prime, U, R, wide R, B prime. Doing the U prime saves you one move whereas doing the U approach uh, just takes one extra move. And DL first approach can give you really efficient first block but reserve the DL approach for special cases that you know you can solve efficiently instead of using DL approach all the time. In the same example, we also have another DL edge connectivity center in here and the pieces that finish the first block are this one in here 
and then these two at the back. And this, just by looking at the position of the pieces, I know that this is not going to be a good first block. But for demonstration purposes, I'll show you how I will solve this first block. So in here, of course, I have to make the pair choice if I want to solve this first or if I want to solve this first. And this is a bad pair, so I don't really want to waste time doing this pair. Why I will opt for solving this first. And I can pair these two up by doing this, pair, and then simple insert like that. And then I have these two in here. And these two, there are two ways that you can actually solve this. You can do F, wide R prime, F prime, like this. Or you can do a D prime and then simply insert this by doing L prime, U prime, L and D. But this is more like a keyhole slash F2 approach instead of uh, being a block building style of approach like this. Another thing to note here is that when you are doing speed solving, you should go for what you can do faster instead of going for efficiency. Uh, but when you're practicing, however, you always want to put efficiency as your top priority. So you can maximize efficiency and learn more about how to be efficient uh, solving the first block. When doing speed solve, it is all right to focus on what you can uh, do faster instead of really focusing on efficiency or doing awkward but efficient moves. Uh, but when you are practicing, you want to uh, focus on efficiency and keep efficiency as your top priority. So that was a DL first approach. I usually use it when I already have the edge uh, DL it's going to be center and I see if I can use the DL approach or not or sometimes I see that I can influence one of these pairs so that I can solve an efficient uh, first block with the DL approach or when I have free uh, pairs like F2 pairs like this and I just try to find the edge that goes to the DL position and then just put the DL edge and then F2 pair and I can use the DL approach in that scenario. So DL approach is really useful for certain cases, but it is not really that useful overall. And you want to keep the DL approach in your toolbox, but it might not take the top spots all the time. Our next approach is called the square first approach. And in this approach, you build a square first and foremost, like this, and then you extend the square into your uh, first block, like this. And our previous DL approach can also be considered uh, a square approach. When you solve one after a pair like this, you make a square and then you extend the square into a first block. With the square approach, you don't necessarily need to insert the DL edge. You can take advantage of these other edges that are connected with the center, like this edge in here, which is not DL edge. And you can also take advantage of a corner and edge pair like this, right? And then you can just put these two together so as to make a square. And once you have the square, you just need to extend the square into a first block and you are done. And the square approach is the most common approach that we use for solving the first block. And a good chunk of our first block solutions rely on the square approach. The square approach is a really useful approach to have. And even when you are doing the square approach, there are different styles to the square approach, which I will illustrate in my examples. So the basics of square approach is just make a square and then extend it into a rectangle and you are done. This is our first example. And just like in the DL approach, you were looking out for the DL edge. When using the square approach, you want to look out for pieces like this, where you have a edge and a corner connected like this in here, or you want to look out for easy cases like this, where you can connect one of these edges, which, is, which does not have white realistic sticker on them, with the center in here. These cases generally come up when we are going for the square approach. You can use F12 pairs for your square approach, but when you do see an F12 pair, you also want to consider doing the uh, DL approach since you can use the DL approach as well. This is our first example of the square approach, and in here I see that I have this edge and corner pair in here, and the other piece for this square in here, right? I am trying to make a square in here. And the other piece for this square is back in here. And what I can do here is that I can connect this edge to the center by doing a U prime like this. And I can insert this uh, edge to this position from this angle by doing D U prime together like this. And then putting the edge in this position and then just moving this edge and corner uh, bit back in the place it belonged to previously. Just a simple D U prime insert and D prime gives me my square and the other pair for my first block is this one and I can pair up these two by just doing it like this and then insert this at the back 
like this. So square approach is one of the most common approaches that we use and square approach is really versatile and usually using the square approach you can get efficient uh, first block solutions. Also when doing the square approach you don't want to think of solving the square first all the time. You again you want to think of the first block as one whole entity instead of thinking as square and then pair. In the same example instead of solving the square first and then going into solving the first block what I can do is influence other pair for the first block so that I have a better case instead of solving whatever case I get after solving this uh, square. In here, instead of solving the square first, I can also sort of influence my other pair in here. Before I solve the square, I can do an R prime, U prime, and then M prime, which sets up the next case in here, and then I have the other case for the square in here. And now, when I solve the square like this, this one gets paired automatically, and I can just insert it like this. Or from this angle, I can just do R P2 like that as well. Don't solve what you see first. If you have the opportunity for influencing, you should be influencing. In this case, the influencing did not help that much. But in some other cases, the influencing can save you a couple moves. And influencing generally is quite short moves, so it's not that it's going to eat up into your FP efficiency. But it does return well if you can do it skillfully. This is our next example and here I see that I have this edge and corner pair in here. I also have another edge and corner pair in here. And when we see cases like this, you want to try out the square approach. So here for white and green, the edge for my square is here, the white and green edge. And I can simply connect it with the green center and I can build my square around this edge. And the other pair for my first block are these two. And these two will be in a good position. So the order for this first block is good enough since you are solving the square with relative ease. And you also have a good case for finishing your first block. So here for solving the first block, you can just insert the edge and then you can build the square with wide R and then D prime like this. And these two are in a good position and for finishing the first block you do M prime keep the edge at the back U prime R P prime. The other option for the first block in this scramble was the blue and yellow one which has this uh, edge and corner pair that you see and the edge for this is here and in this scenario you do not want to solve the square first because these two the edge and the other uh, case from your first block which is this one are connected together and the moment I insert this right the corner is going to end up in this position and solving this case from this position is not really that good of an idea. Instead what you can do is you solve this case first and then you solve this case for finishing your first block. So this can be solved by doing U2 or U prime pairs and then insert like this and and for solving this one u prime f r prime f prime or what you can also do is when you're using this pair for making a square instead of keeping the edge in here you can just put the edge at the back in here so that when you insert this uh, f12 pair to create your square the edge is flipped and now this is a good edge and for inserting this you can just do a u2 move this aside first block so that you don't break up your first block and then simply insert it and your first block is done and we move our first block aside because if you were to insert this without moving the first block then you're breaking up this corner and your first block is not being solved and now we will look at our last example so the obvious things that you can see is the f12 pair in here under f12 pair uh, DL is already solved. You can try out the DL first approach and we also have this edge and corner pair so we can go for the square approach in here. But instead of going for the other approaches that I have already shown you in the uh, in the past examples, I will show you a different style as to how you can make a square. So apart from these things, we also have a uh, edge connected with the center in here. So when you see edges like this, edge connected with the center, you can again try out the square approach. So what I can do here is I can use this edge and center pair to create my red and yellow on bottom block and the red and yellow already has the edge in here and the corner for the square is back in here and these two can be paired by doing D prime R prime like this B2 inserts it into the D layer and the D move makes my square for me just like that. And the last remaining pair is this one and for this there are again various ways to solve but what you can do in this situation is just do U prime R U R prime inserts and then wide R prime B prime. Now this wasn't the most efficient first block that you can do but I did this more as to demonstrate a concept than go for efficiency. 
Till now for square approaches we have been focusing on a corner edge pair like this and then using these kind of edges to build our square. With this example I show that you can also start with an edge and center pair like this and build this corner and edge pair and then put them two together to get your square. And if you want to go for efficient solution, the white and blue looks pretty good. We already have F12 pair in here and you can make a square by just doing U prime B prime like this and this is going to be pair 1. The pair 2 is here right and once you do the U prime B this pair is not really that good uh, to solve. Uh, you can do simple influencing before you solve uh, this pair. Before you do the U prime B you want to do an M move like this which will make another F12 pair at the back in here. So once you do the U prime B you have a pair made in here instead of the bad case that we got previously and you can insert this by doing R2 F2 like this. And the simple one move at the start saved us from doing couple more moves to solve the first block. And if you were to not do the influencing that I showed you, then then for solving this case, what you can do is you can pair these two up by doing uh, wide R prime, U prime, R prime, and then insert it, which is five moves instead of doing the one move at the start. Like I mentioned earlier, if you have opportunities for influencing, you should be influencing because simple influencing does help us in being more efficient and saving excess moves that we might have to do at the end. The last approach that we are going to talk about is called the lines approach and in lines approach you basically create two lines uh, an edge line and a an corner line and put them two together so edge line is this one it consists of edge center edge like this and this is what a corner line looks like uh, corner edge and corner and when you put them together like this you get your first block and you can build either one first, it doesn't really matter. You can build the edge line first and then create the corner line or you can create the corner line first and then build the edge line, vice versa, it doesn't really matter as long as you put them two together which will finish your first block for you. So the basics of uh, lines approach is basically create one line, create the second line, put them together and done. Now we'll go over some examples to illustrate the concept. The last example that I showed you with the square approach you can also solve the same scramble with the lines approach as well. In this scramble we have this edge and center already in here and we can use this for white or yellow block and we also have this this edge and corner in here which can be used for the uh, white and red first block. So I need to build my lines first. Now what line to create? One of the edges for the edge line is here. This needs to come in here and one of the corners for the corner line is here and this needs to come in here. Should I solve the edge first or the corner first? In this scenario solving the edge first would be better since solving the edge first will move this corner and, and the insert will be a bit more easier than doing it from the current position. So what I can do to insert the edge in this position is simply white R prime and then F prime like this. And this comes to the top so I just keep it at the bottom once more. And inserting this to this position you can just use the F move like this and you are done. But you cannot use the F move since you are breaking the edge line in here. So what you can do here is just move both of them aside like this, du prime, then do a R move since we don't have anything in here that will break and our corner line is created at the back and you can put them together and your first block is done. Uh, for the lines approach when you are inspecting you want to be on the lookout for uh, edge and corner pair like this and also uh, edges connected with the center like this. And whenever you have two of them sharing the same color, like blue in here and blue in here, this gives you an opportunity to try out the lines approach and even the square approach. So when we're looking at doing the square approach, you also want to consider doing the line approach. Because the line approach and square approach both use similar concepts but they go about it differently. So in here I have this edge connected with the center and also this edge connected with the corner in here. And here for creating the edge line, one of my edges is here and this can be... So I have one of the edges in here for the edge line and the other edge is here and I can put together my edge line with, with relative ease. For the corner line I already have a corner here and the edge is already connected with the corner and the other corner for my corner line is back in here. For making my first block I do a wide R so as to move this uh, edge and get it ready for creating the edge line but when I do create the edge line my this gets broken up so I want to move this aside D2 and then I insert this for creating the edge line and now this is at the back in here so I can just put this at the bottom like this and I am done. 
So my con line was created at the back and the edge line was done here and then D solves my lines approach first block. This is the last example that I'm going to go over. And in this example, I have this edge and center already here. And I also have another edge and corner pair in here. The corner piece from my corner line is in here and the edge piece from my edge line is in here. Now an interesting thing to note about this lines approach is that both of these lines are opposite to each other. And I also have the yellow sticker in here facing towards the top. That means I don't really need to move uh, my, my edge and corner line aside uh, and I can sort of simultaneously solve my edge line and corner line. So what I can do here is first things first I want to just move this edge and corner pair to the D layer like this and then uh, usually you would want to just solve your uh, edge line and then solve this right but in this case what I can do is instead of solving the edge line in there I, I want to solve this wrongly like this and now I want to solve my corner line so here for solving the corner line I move this uh, corner towards the back in here and then for solving the corner line, I do the B2. This creates my corner line. And since I had previously kept the edge in this position, the B2 also uh, inserts the edge in the proper position. And my edge line is also simultaneously created. And then I can do a D2 and my first block is done. So a simple influencing there, instead of just making my edge line and then solving the corner line, I chose to solve both of them simultaneously instead of uh, doing them one by one and also when you are doing the lines approach uh, you don't need to solve the edge line first or the corner line first you just have to make the choice what you want to solve first depending on which is efficient so till now i have shown you examples where i solve the edge line first and where i simultaneously solve the edge line and corner line so i will do the same scramble it's the same scramble but instead of uh, doing the previous approaches i'm first going to solve the corner line now and then i will solve the edge line so this it's just R, put this edge and corner pair to the D layer, make the corner line like this, move this aside, and then you make the edge line like this, and then you can make your first block like that. So you necessarily do not have to uh, make the edge line or the corner line first, uh, you just want to make your first block and choose the most efficient way uh, possible. Okay. Now that you know how to approach rule first block, what's next? How do you improve your efficiency and become better at block building? There are two things that I would personally recommend. First is practicing with cube grass block trainer. When I was a beginner myself, I was recommended the cube grass block trainer to get an understanding of the rule first block and how to approach block building. It is extremely beneficial in learning the intuition behind piece movement, what approach to take in a certain scenario, and how to influence and set up better cases instead of solving what you get, among multiple other concepts that surround block building. How do you use the trainer? Simply set the setting to Rue FB and start with level 4. Scramble the cube with a given scramble and try to solve the first block yourself first. Once done, re-scramble the cube with a given scramble and look at the solution that the trainer gives you and see what you can learn from their solution. As you get better, increase the level and start doing more complex blocks. The next resource, which is what I mainly use for being better at the Rue method, is looking at walkthrough solves from faster users. Simply search Rue walkthrough and multiple videos pop up. Take your time, look through the videos and learn from them. After you have a basic understanding of the rule method, walkthrough solves are all you need to get better at the method in my opinion. I myself learned the rule method by looking at walkthrough solves. Since after looking at Alexander's Lao solves, I had a basic idea about the method and used the walkthrough solves to aid me get better at understanding the method and also get better at block building. For my final parting words, block building is the most important step of the rule method and if you want to get fast at rule quick, get better at block building. Keep practicing, watch walkthrough solves and and practice with the trainer. Stay tuned for more videos on Rue method including Rue second block, Rue inspection and how to make look ahead simple among other videos. Subscribe for more cubing content and I will see you in my next video. Take care guys and bye.